Greetings. Welcome to May Security Webcast. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Gary Medved, CEO and President. Thank you, Mr. Medved. You may begin. Thank you, Sherry. Good afternoon, everyone. As Sherry said, my name is Gary Medved. I am the CEO and President of May Security International, the owners of the iconic Mace brand. With the entire country working remotely and practicing social distancing, it's only appropriate that MACE presents at the 2020 Virtual Microcap Showcase. After all, MACE, we invented social distancing. We're going to talk about our investment thesis today, which we think represents a huge opportunity with a lot of potential. Going down through the topics we'll be discussing, our brand, what we view as a favorable climate for non-lethal personal safety and security products, a huge untapped market in what we call the fear gap, our innovative new product growth strategy, new retailer and digital strategies, and then wrapping up with what we think is an attractive financial set of characteristics. We are the brand. Mace Brand is a 50-year-old company. It started back in the <clears throat> late 60s, but it became a brand in 1970 starting off with a tear, ga tear gas-based uh, spray called Chemical Mace. Over the years, the product has evolved. <clears throat> product lines have been added, pepper gel, personal alarms, and stun guns. Recently, we had a nationwide survey conducted looking for brand awareness amongst what we thought were the most popular brands in this space. Clearly, you can tell among male buyers, armed women, and unarmed women, Mace is a clear leader in terms of brand awareness. Our second, third place competitors, less than 30% each, and then there was a host of others that combined had about 16% brand recognition among those audiences. When we look at the comparison side by side with formidable competitors as well as others, Clearly, the Mace brand comes out on top in terms of their strong brand recognition. We are the original and authentic Mace brand. They're a product innovator. Our quality level is high. We carry a premium retail price point. Our retail margins are high. And in terms of the direct-to-consumer channel, we view ourselves as a, as a leader in this category, though we have work to do on the Amazon sales front. Furthering the brand awareness, this is some information conducted recently from SEMrush, brand awareness across some platforms. On Amazon, this is a number of searches per month for Mace. It's about 100,000 and it averages that every month. Google, it's an additional 65,000 searches per month for Mace. And then on our own website, people come in, 20,000 unique visitors per month. Our current sales distribution looks like this chart here. Clearly, the retail segment is our leader. We carry about 50% of our sales going through the retail channel. 25% goes through private label, e-commerce, which is Amazon's and all the other dot-coms, including Mace.com, is about 13%. International, 8%. And then less than 5% is all the other categories combined with law enforcement. Just to summarize, we are the brand. We are an iconic brand with superior brand name recognition in the 80th percentile. We're a leader in search terms, and we feel strongly that with this brand recognition, there are some phenomenal opportunities moving forward in the licensing arena concerning personal safety products or personal safety technology. Now let's talk about what we view as a favorable climate for non-lethal personal safety and security products. Unfortunately, some of these stats bore themselves out. <clears throat> Go down through the list here. Over the past 20 years, somewhere between 22 and 29 percent of U.S. adults were victims of crime. Sadly, every year, nearly 10,000 women on college campuses are victims of forcible sex offenses. 
61% of women check the back seat of their car before driving away. 31% of women avoid walking by boys or men. And nearly 20% of women using an online dating site are threatened with physical harm. There are more, but I'm not going to get into all the stats. You can see a picture presenting itself here. Another interesting piece of information we learned through our consumer insight research was when there was an attack, 47% of the time, the personal protection device that was being carried by the person being attacked, the victim, was pepper spray. Nearly 50% of the time, people were carrying pepper spray. 21% of the time, they're carrying a firearm, 12% of the time, a stun gun, and then 10% or less of the time is anything from a knife to blowing a whistle, baseball bat, throwing a shoe, having your dog attack them, whatever. But clearly, pepper spray is the number one item carried by people that are victims of crime. This leads us all to our mission. At the end of the day, our purpose is to make our communities safer. That's it. In a nutshell, make our community safer. This is a higher purpose that we all strive for. It brings us to work every day. And going forward, you'll see some of the strategies we have to help this come to reality. Now I'm going to talk about the huge untapped market and what we call the fear gap. People operate in three spheres, their home sphere, professional sphere, and social sphere. In home sphere and professional sphere, we have what's called the fear gap. This is a time that between the time a 911 call is made, if somebody's trying to break into your house while you're home or your wife is home, your kids are home, babysitter, these are the average times in these large tent cities how long it takes for the police to arrive. San Francisco is the best with about six, a little less than six minutes. Fort Worth, Texas, up near 10 minutes. So from the time that 911 call is made by you, someone else in the home, a babysitter, you could be waiting up to 10 minutes and, and in some situations longer before the police actually arrive. That is what we call the fear gap. From the time that call is made until the police arrive at your front door, there is nothing but fear inside the people that are in that home waiting for the cops to come. And 10 minutes can turn into two hours very quickly. When we look at this as an addressable market, there's 128 million households in America, 5.6 million employer firms, and nearly all of them with less than 500 employees. Socially, 209 million plus citizens in this country over the age of 18. I mention 18 because for most of our products, you have to be 18 years of age or older to own one. Consumer Insight survey that we had conducted in the first quarter was conducted by Nottingham Spurk here in Cleveland, Ohio. A very reputable firm came back with some very good information with us. Again, this was national. We had a large audience sampling, and we wanted to use these insights for further content and product development. We learned a lot. We learned a lot about our tar target demographic, who they are, where they shop, how they shop, their pain, frustration, uh, educational awareness opportunities. We learned a lot about these target demographics. Secondly, speaking of awareness and educational opportunities, there's a lot of opportunity out there with all the end users that is our potential audience. They're unaware of the product, unaware of where it's being sold, unaware of personal safety as a concept, and then the educational side of the products. Lastly, product design elements. This was pretty um, eye-opening for us because our, these are our target audience or people that own the product coming back and telling us that these are the features or these are the design elements you need to consider going forward. So now what we want to do is take what we've learned with this huge addressable market and develop our innovative new product growth strategy. So, this slide represents our innovation process. First and foremost, we want to develop products that are patentable, relevant, and value add to the end user. We're not interested in copycat. We're not interested in gimmicks. We're not interested in products that the end user has no use for. So what we do, or what we will be doing, taking these different spheres where people exist, 
combining it with the consumer insight research we've gathered and developing our focused innovation process to come up with new products that meet those criteria at the top of your slide. Going across the top of the uh, two by two matrix, a typical two by two marketing matrix. In the first column, we have new customers. The second column, we have existing customers. These new products will go across both customer segments. And then in the lower slide, or lower part of the uh, chart there, existing products we have today will still go to new customers and existing customers. This two by two matrix represents our growth going forward. But again, combining these huge addressable market, the fear gap that exists out, exists out there, and consumer insight research will give us this new product focus innovation process. Talk for a few minutes about our new retail and digital strategies. On the retail side, the main focus is consumer centric. For far too long, products in these categories very black, very red, dark, very police looking, when in fact that isn't the audience we're going after. We want to reach to the consumer, the massive audience. So this spring, we launched our new full product continuum. Uh, it's been introduced. It's now working its way through retailers out there in the coming months. You'll see more and more of it reaching the uh, store shelves. And early on, we're experiencing double-digit growth for these new products and packaging making their way out there. The product and packaging, the products and packaging both went for a pro, uh, uh, an aesthetic refresh. Um, give it a look that was more consumer centric, smaller packaging, eco-friendly, uh, better branding, better messaging, so forth. And then lastly, we have a strong price point strategy in place that gives us a lot of pricing integrity that also carries with it uh, very high margins and very high retail margins for our retail partners. Overall, our goal is to develop a personal safety category at the retail level. Currently, none exist. Place, the retail will put items on hooks, they put them in obscure locations, and for the most part, people don't know where to find them. Our goal is to have a category all to itself for personal safety, non-lethal personal safety products. This is an example of our product line refresh. Brighter colors, more of a family look. We now carry the alarms, sprays, pepper gels, soon to be introduced, and then a new line of personal stun guns that are all carrying the same colors, same color code, the same look, and the same packaging concepts. We have a family look from personal alarms that you can clip on the backpack of a five or six year old going to kindergarten to our stun guns. In the digital content development arena, as I mentioned earlier, the Consumer Insight Program was done, or Consumer Insight uh, Survey was done to bring back information that we can use to develop both new products and content development. Where we sit right now, there's a huge opportunity on the awareness and educational side. We know where these customers' pain points are, we know what their frustration level is, and we know what educational information they're looking for. We want to spread this across these three categories, personal safety as a concept, the personal safety products within that category, and then the brands of personal safety products and how they differentiate themselves and why we are different. Also, while developing this new content, it will be spread across all new plat all platforms, whether it's Mace.com, social media, Google, or Amazon. Our goal, once, once this is launched and carrying forward, is to become the personal safety expert. We want people to have our brand name at top of mind. When they think personal safety, we are the first and only brand that comes to mind. That is our goal. From an attractive financial characteristics point of view, we worked hard over the last 15 months to reduce our break-even level. It's, it's pretty attractive right now. We are right size for our current level of sales, but we can also scale up easily. We have a low debt level on our balance sheet, and we also carry broad insider ownership. Currently, the valuation of the company is sitting at one-time sales. So all combined, very attractive financially. 
Summarizing our investment thesis again, we are the brand, the only brand, the original brand, the authentic brand. We have also view there are huge licensing opportunities available for us out there in the personal safety products and personal safety technologies arena. Currently, there exists a favorable climate for non-lethal personal safety and security products, and I think this environment is going to, it's going to be here for the long term. We recognize there is a huge untapped market. We recognize there is a fear gap once a 911 call is made, and we have a lot of innovation that we're looking at to fill that gap through new product growth. We have a new retail strategy. Our goal is to make personal safety products a category inside of every retail outlet you walk into. Digital strategies, content development, going across all social media platforms, websites, search engines, so forth. And then finally, attractive financial characteristics. I want to summarize with a very quick short story here. Two salesmen, two shoe salesmen work for a company Outstanding salesmen were sent to a foreign land to investigate the opportunity of selling shoes. Both were over there for a couple weeks, diligently doing their research. First gentleman gets over to his email, sends back an email to corporate, says, mitigate a disaster, I'm coming home, nobody here wears shoes. Second salesman typed his email back home, said, I've done my research the last couple weeks, research complete, glorious opportunity. Nobody here is wearing shoes. We're taking that viewpoint for the amount of sales and the amount of products being sold into the non-lethal personal safety category versus the potential addressable audience out there. There is nothing but huge potential and opportunity for Mace brand going forward. As we work through our new innovative product strategies, coupled with digital content development across all platforms, we aim to be the expert and the leader in this category going forward. That is it. I see we have some questions here, and let me see if I can answer any of these for you. Okay. During this period of selective retail closures, can you provide update on what large retailers you are in that have remained open and which large ones you have been temporarily closed? Well, first of all, retail closures today in this environment, and I'm assuming you're speaking mostly to the COVID-19 uh, traveling out there. Um, have been department stores and especially niche retailers, mostly in the apparel category. We only had one customer who closed their doors, but it was for a period of one month, and that will be lifted on May 1. Okay, but all other retailers that we are in, their doors have remained open. Okay, um, hopefully that answers your question. E-commerce sales and how the – can you update us on your e-commerce sales and how the various channels such as Mace.com, Amazon, and others have been performing? Well, what I can tell you is about – Six or seven months ago, we started to put more of a focused effort on the um, Amazon side, and that is uh, giving us positive, very positive results. Okay, that's eight months or about six months of running for the results. Very happy with them. And then our advertising spend has become a lot more efficient than it was in the past um, in terms of uh, efficiency, advertising dollars spent versus what our level of sales are. Um, Mace.com, as we introduce more and more digital content across all channels out there, we expect those sales to increase as well. But we're, we're, I wouldn't say we're satisfied, but we're happy with the trends the way they're developing. Um, and the accounts added during the quarter and last year, what are the notable or large ones? Um, I can't speak specifically to, to new accounts that are being added, okay? What I can tell you is we're landing more and more retail hooks out there. Uh, we're getting more product into existing retailers as well as adding new retailers. That's about the extent that I can answer that question. Um, next question, are you seeking or making any progress in getting retailers to have personal safety category and sections in their house? Yes, we are. It starts with the buyer, um, and most buyers today are, are younger, uh, out of school probably in the last 10 or 12 years. They have a different viewpoint on, on safety and the environment out there. So we're working hard with them. Uh, none of this changes overnight, understand, because what we're trying to do is really change the, the mindset of a lot of people, including the people that operate in retail, not only shop. So we know they're on board and they're all helping us work towards that goal. Okay, so that I can tell you. Um, so. To the extent that it's progress, absolutely it's progress. Um, 
what is the current level of NACE's large tax ONL NOLs <laughs> uh, We can answer that in a subsequent uh, earnings call, okay, which I think will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, how does the company convert online awareness to sales, and what is your digital marketing strategy to capitalize on the brand with? Okay, how you convert online awareness to sales is when you're putting this content out there, okay, it's viewed more as a PSA, if you will, public service announcement. And what we're looking to do is capture the emotional side of the consumer. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some consumers out there that right now they go to a website, their pure intent is to buy pepper spray. They go to Google, search who sells pepper spray. They go to Amazon, Google, pepper spray, mace, whatever. They know... I just want pepper spray. The audience that I'm referring to, okay, is the audience that doesn't even think about personal safety as a category, okay? They just go out with their friends, they travel to work, they're walking to a parking lot late at night when they leave work, that's when it hits them. But by the time they get home, prop up their feet, watch TV, and grab a drink, they're forgetting about it already. They need to be taken through the entire sales part process, starting with awareness for personal safety, and then moving into the educational element. Our goal is we tap into the emotional side of these folks, these potential consumers going forward, that as we do it, okay, we are tying the Mace brand to all things personal safety, that when they are ready to purchase a product, we've created that TOMA, top of mind awareness, and there is only one brand that they seek out. Then they can come to Mace.com, they can go to Zoom, uh, I'm sorry, not Zoom, Amazon, search what they want, but at that point, the Mace brand means personal safety to them. Okay, um, let me see here. I don't know if they're going to cut me off, but their questions keep popping in here. Um, let's see if I can answer any other. There's a couple in here I can't answer. So, no, uh, no, no. Nope, I think that is it. Um, those last couple I'm, I'm not going to address here. We can address those on an earnings call. Okay, so... I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this presentation and got out of it what we view as a huge opportunity and potential going forward with a very iconic brand, Mace brand. Thank you for your time. Take care. Stay safe, stay clean, stay home. Bye-bye. Thank you. This concludes today's webcast. You may disconnect at this time, and thank you for your participation. Thank you, Cher.